History is filled with examples of chaos and destruction, disasters that were both within and out of our control. But every once in a great while, there are disasters that could have ended life on Earth as we know it. Along with natural disasters, there have been plenty of times where human error nearly led to global conflict. Sometimes it is kept from the general public to stifle panic. Other times, though, we simply find out about it by accident. From nuclear war false alarms to asteroids narrowly passing by, here are five events that nearly ended humanity. 1815 saw the most powerful and catastrophic volcanic eruption in recorded history. Mount Tambora is located on the island of Samboa in Indonesia. In the early 1800s, the island was part of the Dutch East Indies. Until 1812, the volcano had experienced several centuries of dormancy, but that year, magma started filling in the chamber, causing the mountain to periodically rumble and produce dark clouds. This type of thing would continue for the next couple of years, ultimately culminating in an incredibly devastating eruption in 1815. On April 5th of that year, the volcano exploded, generating a sound wave that was heard up to 870 miles away. But this wasn't an isolated explosion. Mount Tambora actually stayed in a state of eruption for days. On April 10th, the eruptions actually intensified, nearly turning the mountain into a flowing mass of lava. Flaming pumice stones measuring around 8 inches in diameter were thrown out, raining down on nearby villages. Soon after, pyroclastic flows cascaded down every side of the mountain into the sea below, destroying cities and villages. In all, 120,000 lives were lost. In terms of global effects, the eruption ejected between 38 and 43 cubic miles of ash and dust into the atmosphere. This ash then partially blocked the sun, resulting in global temperatures falling by nearly a full degree. The massive tsunamis that traveled in many directions claimed thousands more lives. Had this eruption been any larger, it could have blocked out the sun for a longer period of time, resulting in catastrophic loss of life. To this day, the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora was the largest volcanic eruption on record for the last 10,000 years. As humans, we like to assume that we have a bit of control over what happens on our planet. However, we tend to forget that outer space is full of large asteroids, black holes, solar flares, all of which pose a significant threat to life on our planet. On August 12, 1883, Mexican astronomer Jose Bonilla was studying the sun and observing sunspots. He loved looking into space, and since space observation was still reaching new heights, new discoveries were being made all the time. But, as he was looking on, Bonilla claimed to have observed over 400 dark, unidentified flying objects cross in front of the sun. It was not really known what it could have been, so the rest of the scientific community wrote it off as a hoax or a high-flying flock of geese. Bonilla didn't agree and continued to insist on what he had seen, but what could he really do? Was that the end of the story, though? Not by a long shot. In 2011, scientists decided to look deeper into Bonilla's claims, sensing that if there was something legitimate there, it could be a big breakthrough. Well, not only was he right, the truth was actually a lot more terrifying than they could have ever imagined. The dark, unidentified objects were not actually birds at all. As it turns out, there was a comet somewhere in our universe that weighed over a billion tons. Fragments from that comet had broken off and shot towards Earth. The majority ended up passing within 4,900 miles of us, less than the entire width of Russia. But some passed within 400 miles. Scientists estimate the fragments could have ranged in size from 164 feet to about 3,280 feet across. One strike would have caused massive damage to a specific area. Multiple strikes could have destroyed most, if not all, of life on Earth. During the 1970s and 80s, relations between the Soviet Union and the United States were incredibly strained, to say the least. 
Both countries had nuclear missiles and ran thousands of drills preparing for a number of different scenarios. It got to be so much that members in each of the country's highest offices were paranoid of attacks. On September 26, 1983, Stanislav Petrov, who was a lieutenant colonel in the Soviet Air Defense Forces, was the only soldier on duty at a command center that received early warning signals from satellites about incoming missiles. Shortly after midnight, the bunker's computers reported that one ICBM was heading straight towards the Soviet Union from the United States. However, Petrov considered it an error as it was highly unlikely that the US would launch a single missile for a first strike, leaving itself open to retaliatory counter-strikes. So, he didn't notify anyone. Soon after, four more missiles were detected being launched from the United States. Especially after no missiles struck from the first alert, Petrov once again determined computer error and did not report anything. Thankfully, he was right. No missiles were launched from the United States. But had he not used his better judgment, there is a very real possibility that this computer glitch could have resulted in the Soviet Union firing missiles at the United States, causing a nuclear war that could have impacted not only both countries, but the world as a whole. 2020 has to be one of the worst years in recent history, thanks largely in part to the COVID-19 virus. We've been able to see exactly how dangerous pandemics can be. However, the coronavirus is nothing compared to a massive outbreak that struck Europe and Asia in the mid-14th century known as the Black Death. In this time, the disease was believed to have started in China before slowly making its way westward. Diseased rats and fleas were the carriers that brought the disease and left a trail of dead bodies behind them. In 1347, a number of ships from the Black Sea arrived in the Sicilian port of Messina. When they docked, though, the majority of the sailors on board were dead, and the survivors were incredibly ill, covered in gooey boils from head to toe. The locals were quick to turn the ships away and send them back into the sea, but it was too late. The damage had been done. The highly infectious plague quickly covered the rest of Europe, wiping out close to a third of its population within four years. By the time the Black Death had finally subsided, it was believed to have caused between 75 and 200 million deaths across Europe, Asia, and the rest of the world. A plague of this magnitude really goes to show how vulnerable we are. Somehow, as if destiny is trying to tell humans something, this near disaster comes back to nuclear weapons. By 1995, the Cold War had ended. However, the United States and Russia still had quite the stockpile of nuclear weapons, and neither country trusted the other enough to let their guard down. This was especially true on January 25, 1995. On that day, Russian radar detected a fast-moving object above the Barents Sea, which is located on Russia's northern border. It was most alarming to the Russian officials because whatever was on radar separated into three sections, just like a Trident missile would. In Moscow, a signal was sent to briefcases that contained the nuclear codes. These codes stayed with President Boris Yeltsin, but there was a timer for this process. Russia had 10 minutes to decide whether or not to respond. Eight minutes after the first alarms sounded, the objects crashed into the sea, causing Russia to cancel its counterattack. Later on, it was learned that the object detected on radar was a scientific rocket that was fired from Norway. To make it worse, the Russian government had been informed of this launch weeks in advance. But the message never made it to the radar station. That small mistake nearly led to global nuclear war. So yes, maybe ignorance is bliss. It seems that no matter which direction we turn, there will be a new way for life on Earth to end. However, it is a reminder that life is fragile and precious. So, whether our threats come from the cosmos, the Earth itself, or other human beings, we have a chance right now to make the most of what life we have. To see our video about the world's worst man-made disasters, be sure to click the link on screen now. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. And with that, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.